everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the King's Council Podcast. And man, we have got ourselves a treat today. A dude who I've actually been waiting to connect with. Um, some of you guys know who Caleb is within the King's Council. Caleb Willems, I'm referring to. He's been like, dude, I got to get you in touch with this guy, Taylor Welch. And uh, through actually through a separate party, we got connected. And uh, this is literally our kind of first introduction to each other. So you guys as listeners uh, get to meet Taylor like live in person here as, as I'm meeting him as well. So brother, welcome to the show, man. Thank you for having me. It's awesome to be here. And from what I know about you, I love you already. So we got that going for us. <laughs> it's you don't know a whole lot, bro. So I, let's not get too ahead, too ahead of ourselves. All right, we'll slow down. We'll slow down a little bit. <laughs> we'll see how long this episode goes. So, um, man, so you're you are you you're home in Nashville, right? Yes, Nashville. We're uh, we're in a, a little suburb called Franklin. Yeah. We uh, moved into a new place in January, and I honestly this week I figured out a way to connect to the internet. Like we're. <laughs> We're out in the middle of what feels like nowhere. So it worked out for us because now I can be on Zoom and I've been living five months without internet, which is harder than it sounds. Dude, it sounds actually incredible. It's incredible for two weeks and then it's not incredible. I suppose. Anymore. I, I'd, yeah. I'd go hungry, man. I need DoorDash like like now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We don't have that. <laughs> no DoorDash. <laughs> Did you get some land down there? Or... Yeah. Okay. yeah. We, we got a... Uh, nothing crazy we're on we're on five acres but franklin franklin is uh they just passed the uh, the county williamson county which is the county that we're in they're tired of developers coming in and chewing up all of the the land right. and so they they just passed uh, a new legislature that basically won't let you build on anything less than like five acres in uh-huh. williamson county and so the goal there is just to kind of protect the the farmland so we snuck through that so we just have five acres so we barely made it through nice but, right on man yeah. love it is that where you're from the, i know Tennessee? actually i was no i was i'm born in louisiana so i grew up in louisiana my family moved to memphis i spent most of my life in memphis tennessee so just a couple of hours west and then my wife wanted to live in nashville when we got some of the businesses up and running we were we were poor like we, we were dirt poor we yeah. lived off of uh i was a full-time pastor and i lived off about eighteen thousand dollars a year um my wife yeah i don't know how we did it we just money showed up it was like freaking you know manna from heaven right every month and then when we got the businesses rolling she was like i'd like to move to nashville now so we moved out of memphis into nashville and it's been amazing we've been here since 2016 it's an amazing city uh, yeah, so we love we, it we love nashville too good food there man Great food, great people, great music, great vibe. It's all of the above. My, yeah. my wife's like uh, favorite store. I actually just bought her some stuff from uh, Kittenish. Uh, oh. Are you familiar? Is your no. wife familiar? Okay, well, so my, my wife's like a, a little teeny bopper. So she needs like extra small. And and uh, it's Jesse, Jesse James Decker. So Eric Decker, I knew who he was. Football player, his wife, who's like a country singer. So of course lives in Nashville, but that's her, her right. store there in the, the, is the Gulch. Yeah. The Gulch. It's like the, yeah. one of the first green areas in the city. Yeah. 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 So anyways, um, I just ordered a bunch of clothes for, for Ash. So by the time this good airs, you. she'll good she'll for you, man. Some good husband. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's good, man. So you were a pastor, dude. Tell me about that, man. What, how was that just like a lifelong goal that you wanted or what? Yeah, I man, I remember one time I was watching um, a Hillsong United DVD in Collierville, which is a suburb of Memphis, and I was like, I want to do that. Like, I want to be, I want to be a worship leader, you know. And I was probably, I was like 10, 10 or eleven or some somewhere around that age. My my, my whole life, you know, I was plugged into church, but um, you know, I quit basketball. I was playing basketball in Memphis in high school. I ended up quitting basketball because I wanted to, uh, pursue music. I wanted to go all in on music yeah. and yeah, that's, it was always a lifelong dream and I ended up getting that dream. And it's interesting, the perspective you get when you achieve something you always wanted to achieve, but then realize once you achieve it, you didn't really want it. Right. You know? Yeah, man. Um, and so it was a tough season because, pastors and people in the ministry, man, they got to be called to it. Like there's, you got to have a grace for that. There's, you don't just do that for money, you know? Right. Um, and so 
we got married. We got married, and about a month or two after uh, my wife Lindsay and I got married, she was like, "Something, you just you got to change something. You're, you're working a hundred hours a week, and and you're you're not you're not happy." And she was right. And I was like, "I don't know what I'm going to do different." And just through a series of events, I got connected with a real estate company in the city of Memphis, and transitioned off staff at church. I was still involved. Uh, still plugged in as a worship leader and play keyboard and, and all that good stuff. But that was like my first taste of um, real estate and the corporate mm-hmm. world because all my jobs up to that point had been like church jobs. And uh, it was fun. I, I was like, I really like this. I like, I like real estate. I like investors. I like, you know, just uh, more non-church work. And so through that season, that's how I learned how to do everything that I do today, for the most part, from a real estate standpoint. I love it, man. So you were like, did you like pastor a church? Were you a youth pastor or? I was a worship pastor. So worship, the okay. church was, yeah, this is a church in Memphis. I was 21, 22. Right on. Um, and so I grew up at the church. And so I kind of knew, um, you know, the, the pastors and how everything, how everything worked. There's some great friends that are still in the area, but man, yeah, I was, I was promoted to a uh, position that was like, I had no idea what I was doing. I was managing 350 volunteers. I was like overall production. um, Bro, this is a big church. It's a big church. Volunteers. Holy cats. Yeah. Just for production. So just production volunteers. So we're probably at seven or 8,000 people at the church, um, multi-campus. And yeah, I was like, I'm 21 years old. I had no, no clue what I'm doing. Right. Um, right. I'm trying to lead people who are like way older than me, but it was good training because then you get into the business world and it's like, you know, yeah, most of my staff are older than I am. At least when I started traffic and funnels, now I'm 27, 26, everyone I hired is older than me. Uh, but I had had that, that training yeah. in church life. And so it was no big deal. I didn't, didn't really affect me. So amazing. Dude, I love that. So I want to, uh, there's so many more questions we're going to dive into here, but I, I read this article, um, man, I don't even know when it, when it was actually published, but it's a study of, by Barna who does a lot, a lot of, you know, studies of over the, the church and just religions as a, as a whole. And it said that 89% of pastors do not consider themselves leaders, 89%. And I was like, wow, what the dirt? Like that's, it, that's voluntarily, they gave that information. So it's like only 11% actually consider themselves leaders. And I mean, my heart just as of late has just been so drawn to the church itself here in America. And just like, how oh, I think it's kind of whack uh, as far as like entertainment on Sunday. And that's, there's really no like actual church, what I read in the Bible to, of taking place. Um, but I think a lot of it is like so many people, they want a pastor in uh, their, or they're put in a role. That's not necessarily their giftings or their, uh, you know, talents or their, their, what their strengths actually are. And they're left trying to, do so many different things versus actually like if we were operating and and understanding like what our giftings and talents are like we can put other people in those places and then truly operate like the body of christ and and yeah as the church should man so yeah i think i think it's interesting man there's a lot of people i I feel like that are that are running church that aren't necessarily called to church yeah um there's a lot of churches that are not necessarily called to be churches either. Um, yeah. As weird as that sounds, because like what I see is a lot of fabrication. It's like, man, you, you have everything right, except for you don't have God. Or you're yeah. like, you, you're not actually submitting. You're just trying to grow, you know, membership or whatever. And it's yeah. interesting, man, because like when you go to a really healthy, uh, a really healthy environment where it's like, you can tell, man, the leadership and the people that are at the church, like all they care about is like, are we making space for God? Are we making space for things that matter? You can feel it. It's very different. Right. It's funny because in Nashville, the church we go to uh, with with Henry and Alex Seeley, it's the belonging uh, co here in Nashville. Man, right. it's like they they have like no they, they don't they don't even care about anything. Like they're like, man, well, is God going to be here or not? You know, like yeah. growing up in the mega church world. I met my wife in Springfield. We lived in Springfield for a, for a season, and um, and she was leading worship in uh, James River, and it was forty thousand people there on Easter, and that's where I met my wife. Massive church, and then and then the Life Church in Memphis, um, you know, seventy thousand 
remember church and we you know, traveled around and Dino Rizzo and like uh, Bethany in Louisiana. And I grew up at the Durons. Like, dude, I, I'm telling you, I grew up in mega church, right? <laughs> massive, massive places. And uh, it's so refreshing being at a church in Nashville. It's like they're big, but they don't care at all. Like they, they don't care at all. Yeah. Uh, you can tell. And I think there's a lot of churches that are more businesses than they are totally. churches. Totally. You know? Yeah, man. And uh, yeah, my heart has really just been, um, pastor I was talking with the other day was just like, there needs to be more of an emphasis on community over content. And, it, yeah. and it's like, you know, the content is great. I, I love like Craig Groeschel and some, you know, phenomenal leadership teachers, but I, I can watch that on YouTube, right? It's like that community is just like, what's that, you know, that's church, right? Like being able to be accountable to each other. And anyways, well, this, this, this podcast isn't necessarily about the church, but, um, well, maybe we can wrap more about that on another episode, dude. So <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Right on. So man, give me a more than, so you're, you started traffic and funnels when you were, was it 26? Is that what you said? Yeah, 26. So that would have been 2015. So September of 2015. All right. Yeah. Yeah. And the sales mentor is the other big one. We started that in summer of 2019. I believe. Okay. Yep. It, what, so what, help me, what is sales mentor? Is that sales training? That yeah, so they, they do, uh, they teach people how to be uh, closers for other people's offers. Okay. And then they staff a portion of those people into other businesses as well. Right on, right on. Uh, specific industry at all? Mostly just online. Anything online. that's selling anything online, uh, cool. if it's information or expertise online. So the business started for us, like we, we wanted to be able to go out and find sales talent. And we would, we were paying these headhunters to find a sales talent. It was like, they couldn't yeah. find us anybody. And the people they did find, it was like, well, these people aren't even good. So we're like, well, we're just going to train our own group of people and hire from that group of people. Um, in 2019, we probably trained 400 salespeople. In 2020, we probably trained two or 3,000. In 2021, we trained 30,000 salespeople. And so we were like, well, we can't hire 30,000 people. Um, right. You know, there's no way. So it was, it was mid-2021 that we were kind of like, we're going to have to start staffing some of these folks into other positions. And it turns out salespeople are really hard to find and train. So the market was kind of already prepped and ready for us to begin staffing and developing those people. Yeah. Right on, dude. You, so you're crushing during the old uh, shutdowns and everything. Yeah, COVID was like the best thing that ever happened to the <laughs> online businesses. Yeah, especially I, uh, especially sales mentor because people were like, yeah, I don't want to go back to work. Like, just teach me how to sell online and I'm good. I'll stay at home. You yeah, know? yeah, man. I love it. So are you are you pretty active with that still or uh, what's your role with, their, with uh, sales mentor now? Yeah, I've moved into more um, chairman faculty for those brands. So I just came off. So about 60 days ago, I was like, man, I think it's time for me to take a little bit of a break and just kind of look at life. I've been gunning, gunning since yeah. 2015. In fact, I talked to somebody, talked to one of my good friends this morning, and he was like, bro, I have no idea how you survived for seven seven years. I'm like, I don't, I don't know, man. I was, I was working, having fun. Um but you, know, you can ask anybody on the teams. It's like, man, I fell in love with the work. Um, but then an interesting thing happened probably around 2020 to early 2021, where I was like, I, I was so busy that I didn't have a vision for what, what was next. You know, like I didn't have a, a, a solid purpose for like, where do I want to head? And so it was about two months ago, two and a half months ago, I told my staff, like, I'm going to take a sabbatical. It's been nice seven, eight years. Like I need 30 days off. Uh, but in October, November-ish of last year, there was, a, there was a, a guy who I started speaking to about what it would look like for him to come in and take over some of the organizations. Because um, I was running a CEO and kind of main visionary for, for all the brands. Um, and it was a couple of weeks on sabbatical. And I was like, dude, it's time. It's time for somebody to come in. It's time for a new CEO to come in, build into the next season. And so we actually just announced this last Friday. So it's brand brand wow. new, but I've stepped away as CEO. Um, and so I'm more like in the faculty developing content. I'm really only involved in maybe a, an hour or two a month 
and uh, this guy's coming in and it's, it's a great story because he knew me before the businesses he, he, we met in Springfield when I was, you know, worship nice. leader and had nothing nice. to do with business, got into the, to the corporate world. We actually hired him, traffic and funnels, hired him in 2018, 2017, 2018. He, uh, he rose to head of advertising. And then in 2020, he had some, there was some family stuff that he had to take care of with, with his mom. And so he ended up moving, moving back to Missouri, transitioned out. And now he's kind of coming back in, but he's got his own agency at this point. And so it's just a phenomenal, it's like a God story. You know, one of those things where it's like, oh, that was perfect. It's like, yeah, we didn't, we didn't try to make it perfect. It just happened. Right. Um, so that's my role right now. Love it, dude. So I got to ask, man, you had, so 30 days off were you, how was how was that for you the like, first week i was going crazy yeah uh, I couldn't, it was I, really hard i bet yeah. i mean you're an entrepreneur bro like you're like head on a yeah. swivel what, what's next so, right? dude, it's funny because the first week i was like dude i don't want to do this because i'm losing <laughs> my mind i'm almost i'm almost more stressed not doing stuff than i am 100 percent from working but what it was interesting is i feel like it was a great god time for me because it was like yo you are striving like you're mm -hmm. you are like full on like make everything happen for yourself which sounds so crazy for a guy like me to say because like historically i'm kind of the guy that's you know like take responsibility get up earlier like do your work you know right. all of those things um but there is a time for stepping back disconnecting letting things lie as they like just letting things go a little bit um but I was, you know, kind of praying through it. I was like, I just give me, I just need five hours a week to do something or else this is going to be unproductive for me. So I, I kind of filled it up a little bit, like had a couple of hours a week that I was able to do something with, but dude, the sabbatical itself, I was telling Gabriel yesterday, um, every year for my staff moving forward, uh, I'm going to make them take the month of June off every year. We're going to make it happen. We're going to set the business up in such a way. And nobody needs to work. We'll have some VAs and some support role uh, people in. But man, there's nothing like having margin and having cap space. And what we do is as soon as we have a moment of cap space, bam, we fill it up and then it's no longer cap space. Yeah. Right. And dude, there's nothing as productive as a group of people who have bandwidth and they don't touch it. Just leave it alone. Just let it sit there, you know, which is hard. It's its its, it's own discipline. Yeah, it is, man. And that... I I love that you just said that, that it's, it's discipline because I, I find myself in that, you know, struggle, we'll call it often where it's like, okay, I've got like two hours mm, what, and we're just like looking do? for the next thing versus just spending time with, with maybe God, like, like go just read for a, pit, a period of time. And, uh, cause it's just always, it's that mindset shift of like, well, that's not productivity. Like that's activity, but in all reality, there's yeah. such a need for that to be able to operate in excellence in, in all those 100%. other areas. So that's yeah. good. I bet Gabriel is probably like, cha-ching, June is off next year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, she's, I, I tend to attract people that are just like kind of the same. Where it's like, man, they'll just yeah. like, Gabe, Gabriel went on a vacation last week. She's, she's probably going to get mad soon because she's on here, but she can't talk. Um, <laughs> but she went on a vacation last week. It's like, man, we had to force her out of the office. Same with, uh, same with all of our leaders. I think it's a societal thing where it's like, man, we're all passionate. We all really care. We're all motivated. We're driven. Uh, but it's it's a counterintuitive thing that sometimes the most productive and effective thing that you can do is do nothing. Yeah. For a little bit, you know. Right. Yeah, that's so good, man. Mm -hmm. That's so good. So tell me then, you're, I mean, you're crushing it. Is it safe to say you're, you're crushing it? financially i mean there, we always want to do more and you know acquire more do more be more have more impact but you're doing all right is it safe to say that yeah, i'm doing i'm doing all right yeah all right. by by most people's standards yes yes yeah. so tell me man going from the eighteen thousand dollar a year pastor because our our audience the king's council listeners here i mean we talk a lot about wealth, wealth creation. And, you know, it's God that gives us that ability. And for those that have that, that calling, uh, or that desire to, to, to grow that, you know, just that entrepreneur spirit, like it, it's for me, it's, it's just like permission to be able to do so. 
So talk to me maybe a little bit more of, of your mindset or when that shift happened, or maybe it was always that way. You just found yourself in a role where you're like, this isn't why I was created. And maybe even the, the idea of ministry to business tree and, and just kind of your shift through that process, if you will. Yeah, that, that was, it was, um, it was tough for me to walk away from full-time ministry and walk into something new. Mm -hmm. Uh, because I felt like I had wasted time, you know, like I'd wasted at that point, my whole life trying to do something that I did, I wasn't going to do in the future, which ironically is a repeated theme. I think for your more driven, motivated, um, but yet kingdom minded individuals, because we sometimes have a linear, uh, carnal view of time rather than a kingdom view of time. Yeah. And like kingdom, there's no wasted time ever. Like it's right. yeah, everything flows from one thing to the next and everything works out for the good of those who love him and blah, 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 blah. Like we, yeah. we know these things intellectually, uh, but then we're like, well, I feel like I just wasted time in it. You know, even with the last season, I am, I am so driven that like, no matter how successful or rich or whatever I become, I am aware of the next level. And therefore I never feel like I'm actually successful, you know, and that, that became a hamster wheel for me. Um, And it started, ironically enough, it started when I transitioned into the real estate world and it, I don't think it ever fully ends. um, But it's something that I'm getting better at with time. Yeah. Um, There's something interesting to be said with knowing how to prioritize your life based on what's most important to you, you know? When my daughter was born in 2019, I was like, man, I might be, I might be doing life wrong. You know, I'm just like so busy chasing things that actually don't matter. Um, and I talk about this now, like there's a product that we have called the consulting memo. And uh, man, I've gotten more messages about this thing because in one of the welcome issues, I tell a story about how uh, a couple of months ago, I was walking out and I had to meet a, a bunch of investors at the Nashville headquarters. And I walk out and my daughter's dressed like Elsa from Frozen in the middle of the living room we're on an Elsa kick right now yeah, yeah. and um, <laughs> she's like hey daddy you should dance with me and I was like in that moment in, in that in my mind I was like I have a decision to make and I'm aware of I'm aware of the decision like decision one is I move my office I move their schedule and I I maybe upset a few people at work but I get the moment with her that she'll remember forever option two is I say I can't do it and maybe she'll understand and I miss a moment how often in our lives do we prioritize the moments that we will regret in the future? Mm-hmm. And we don't even know it. You know, we don't even know it. It's like I was on an interview this morning. Was, I don't know how many people are listening to this. I think there's hundreds of thousands of people that are tuning in live. It's this massive TV show syndication. And they're like, what have you learned about success? And I said, success is defined by the moment. And then when you take your last breath and you're exiting this life and entering the next, did you invest your moments wisely? That's what success is. And if we're not aware of that choice, we will always make the wrong choice. And so sometimes it's not like, sometimes it's not about fixing anything. It's just about becoming aware. Like you can't buy a chunk of time that you misplaced yesterday. I can buy a bad real estate deal. I can go make it back. I can make more money. You know, like I can apologize to old friends, whatever. But you can never buy time yesterday that wasn't properly spent, you know? Yeah. And so it's a really big deal that we just don't think about. Yeah, that's good, man. That's good. Uh, how do you t- talk to me then about, so within the King's council, we, we coach, um, uh, when people get onboarded with us, it's, you know, let's develop some core values and understand like what that really means. Cause those are going to be what ultimately dictate the decisions that we make, uh, it, and, and, and be able to instantaneously make those decisions knowing that is, based upon our core values, is that getting us closer or further from our vision? And how do you maybe um, break up your day now that uh, I'm calculating your daughter's three? Uh huh. Is that right? So yeah. how do you break up your work day? Um, and, you know, a lot of people call it the work life balance, um, or more so maybe a, a harmonious type relationship between how I can be the most productive in all pillars of life, um, not necessarily robbing from one to pay the other, but how do I operate in excellence and, and, you know, with intention, because that's what a lot of it comes down to is you got to be intentional 
with, with what you're looking to do. So what do you got for us on that, man? Yeah, I think part of this comes down to part of this comes down to personality. Mm. Um, some people really value like routine and steadiness and constant. And some people really value variety. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, there's, there's no right or wrong way to do it. I can tell you for me, um, I tend to value routine micro and variety macro. And so I, I've dialed into like, what is, what fuels me? What do I like? Um, and, and right now I'm in a season where um, from a macro standpoint, the next six months are going to be a little bit less intense for me. And so I'm doubling down. I'm like, I'm going to, I'm going to wake my daughter up every single morning without fail. Uh, and we're going to run around the house and be crazy for the first 30, 45 minutes of the day. And then I'm going to read and I'm going to go to the gym and I'm going to do whatever I want to do because I want to do it. <laughs> you know, yeah. that's, that's, what's good for me right now. Um, I guarantee you without fail, like I promise you, I will bet you money that December rolls around and January enters and I start getting restless because it's been six months and I need variety. Yeah. You know, I need to change what I'm doing and I'm going to be ready to build and I'll go into a different season and that season will last another six months and I'll push and then I'll take the next six months. And so I think you got to look at your life. Like it's like a chess piece like or, or a board with, with pieces on the board. People get, people lose their way when they become, uh, unstrategic about their own life. They feel like they're uh, prey to circumstances rather than being the orchestrator or the, the, you know, the strategist yeah. to put their life together. And so you know, my values are very simple. I can read them to you. There's, there's five of them. They're easy. Yeah. Um, those values definitely run my life. But my schedule is like, I want to be 100% in what I'm, whatever I'm doing. If I'm not 100%, then I'm 0%. And there is no such thing as balance. There's just presence. And so, you know, I know for a fact, my daughter and my wife would rather have 10 hours at hundred percent than 40 hours at 5%. Mm -hmm. This is a no brainer. And so I think you got to be careful sometimes when you're just like life, work-life balance really is like transactional. You're just trying to check something off. Yeah. Uh, I'm a bigger fan of being present. It's good, man. Love that. Love that. And I love what um, you said, just like there, there's seasons, seasons for everything, right? So yeah. what, what advice would you give though to somebody that, because inevitably we know that this happens is, you know, someone's listening to this and they're like, yeah, that's easy. You get six months off, must be nice, right? Like they're thinking that. And if you're not thinking that, yeah. I know some of you are thinking that they're listening to this thing. It's like, uh, it's a victim mentality. It's what it is. It's like, must be nice. Well, yeah, you know what it is. It is nice, right? Because you've put yourself in a position to be able to do that uh, and choose to do that. But uh, what would you say to that person that maybe is thinking that, that dude, let's say they got three kids and they, the decisions that they've made up until this point has put them exactly in the position that they're in, but they, they now have the ability to make that next decision of like, okay, I know what I've done. It has, has produced me these results. Okay. But I can choose what I'm going to do next, but I still have three kids. I need to be intentional with them, but I need to actually, you know, find an opportunity. Okay. First off, if you're just working for a paycheck right now, you got to find another opportunity head on a swivel. Like let's, if you need some of those DM us, we've got opportunities uh, in place, but you got to find a side hustle. You're not going to by by working a job, you're not going to be able to set yourself up in a, in a way financially to have the time freedom that that Taylor has in his life. So what would you man say to that person that is like, I'm, I'm, I don't have time right now. How do I make time? How do I make time serve me? I might make money serve me uh, for that matter. Uh, so I can ultimately serve God in, in the purpose that why I was created. I think there's a misconception about um, like, it's, it's all perception me working hard or me not working hard or taking a sabbatical or not taking a sabbatical. Everyone compares my perception of myself to my perception of that person. And so I believe that like the fastest way to die is to have no challenges in your life. Period. Yeah. It's the fastest way to die. Um, the second fastest way to die is to have too many challenges in your life. So it's like a little bit like a double-edged blade here. Sure. Um, me not like I can tell you, bro, like me taking the next six months, I will work harder than most people in the world 
combined on on a down season you know yeah. my grid is different the the rubik's cubes that i have assembled in my mind for the world is different my perspective is different so it's like if you want to if you want to do things that very few people are are able to do then you're gonna have to tolerate things that very few people are willing to tolerate and it's just a it, it's really a commitment you make to yourself that the destination is worth it and the direction is worth it i don't believe that things get too hard because they're too hard i think things get too hard for people because they lose faith in the destination they lose faith in the direction they lose faith about where they're going so you've heard this said like you know, it's, uh, it, it's not, um, it, you don't need more resources, you need better reasons. It was like, yeah. that's basically it, you know? Um, to that person though, to zero in on your question, to the person who's kind of thinking that, um, you have to make sure that you directionally, you are proud of who you're becoming. Mm. If you can answer that question, it's like, okay, people now are gonna be like, well, that's pretty existential. Like, that's not applicable at all. It's like, okay, well, just listen. Like, are you, are you prouder of yourself this Christmas than you are right now? Yes or no? And if so, why? What does that look like? It's not that we're not winning. That's not why we feel bad about ourselves. I met some of the most successful people in the world. Some of them feel way worse than they did when they were poor. Right. You know, it's not about your success. It's how you feel about your success. It's how you feel about the progress you're making. And so if you're not tapped in to like, this is my choice, this is my direction, I am proud of it because it's my direction, then no matter how successful you become, you're not going to be very happy. I don't know if that's making sense, but. Dude, yeah, no, it's, it's solid. It is amazing because uh, so many people are, they're basing their success on other people's success. And that, at the end of the day, that uh, your definition, definition of success is going to be different than, than mine and everybody that's listening. And it's, it's defining what that is. And for me, man, it's, it's really identifying the, the God-given purpose of, of why I, I was created. Because I, I realized that I could be successful, you know, what, people, what most people think successful is at a lot of things and yeah. still feel like a failure, right? And it's just, just what you said, man. It's like if, it's what you feel about it that, that matters. So who gives a rip what other people think? about it or, or, you know, what, what, if they have more money in the bank or less money, like who yeah. gives a rip? That's, that's, that's for them to decide what their success level is. So it is, if you're, if, so this is amazing, man, because what I wanted to get at with that question was even is like, if you're that person with three kids and you know, you're not crushing it financially right now, but are you, are you, do you have the time to spend with your kids? Right. Are yeah. you able to uh, be present, as you mentioned, man, in that moment to not be focused on the the goal or the the what I'm going to achieve one day to the point where you're missing the presence and 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 being able to be there with your kiddos because um, uh, I mean that times you never get that back, right? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, man, it's good. It's good, dude. So, um, what do you? What are you focusing? I know you're taking six months, quote unquote, off, right? But what are you? You've got traffic in, in in funnels, kind of going. You've got sales mentor going. You've you've passed that baton, that kind of leadership baton. You're still, you know, controlling levers from the the from the cockpit, so to say. But what is your like focus on then? Because I know like time off is time off, but you're still growing something, right? Like that's just the mindset yeah. and human being you are. So tell me what you're working on now, man. So we have a, a new brand called The Wealthy Consultant. Um, I am super passionate about uh, people who are, um, you know, th there's a couple different people that I, that I really enjoy helping. One class of person would be that they're working at a job, they're in corporate America, or they're in the workforce. Tremendous expertise, but they're just not happy. Uh, being able to untrap and unlock them via consulting. is you know, consulting is a $140 billion industry. It's growing every day. And people just don't. People take their own expertise for granted. Yeah. They, they think it's normal. And it's like, no, nope, it's not normal. There's, there's millions of people who would pay you to teach them something. Yeah. Um, and then the other class of, of person inside of Wealthy Consultant are the people who have just kind of been hamster wheeling along. They're not really, they're not doing bad, but they're not doing great. They're looking for ways to increase leverage. Uh, my consulting IP you know, that, that I started building in 2015 
Um, you know, I've, I've tested 40,000 clients through it. I mean, it's like, it's insanity. Uh, we've had hundreds of thousands of customers come through uh, our different curriculum and programs. And so a lot of the new curriculum that I'm developing now is really designed around, uh, let's take the next three to five years of your career. Um, let's leverage it appropriately so that when, when the fifth year comes around, it's like, you don't have to work anymore. You're, you're completely free. You do whatever you want to do because you've assembled your infrastructure properly. You put your, your capital into the right assets. And so it's going really well. One of the first things that we did is uh, launch the consulting memo, which is a monthly print newsletter. And so I basically take the lessons that uh, my team is, is accruing from, you know, hundreds of different industries. We put them into a, a newsletter and we ship it out to people's offices and homes all over the world. Uh, people lose their minds over like this a thing. Physical, um, a physical newsletter yeah. people are getting, not like an email. Yeah. No, it's a physical it. newsletter. And uh, each month it comes with like a bonus. Um, so there was a book that I really enjoyed uh, that I read last month that I put put all of my notes. It's seven pages of book notes. And people, it's just, I think it's fun for people because they get, it's like Christmas yeah. every month. You get, they get to hear lessons that work. And then they also get to read, um, you know, unique excerpts from things that matter. And so that's, um, people pay 27 bucks a month cover shipping all over the world. Uh, it's fantastic. People can get a free version if they would like at consultingmemo.com. Um, and dude, it's just, it's a, uh, it's a different, it's a different type of company because it's super chill. We're on waiting lists for a long time. Like there's, there's not a lot of stress. There's not a lot of chaos. Um, so that's going great. I have a handful of equity clients that I consult and advise and I love them and we're building really cool products together. Uh, there's a, there's a paid media agency. There's a, you know, got some stuff in the crypto landscape. And so I'm just uh, having fun building things that matter yeah. that the world needs more of. And um, you know, we'll see what happens. I, there's also the commercial real estate. We have uh, $25 million of beautiful buildings going vertical right now. Part of it's in Nashville, part of it's in Branson, Missouri. And um, it's, it's amazing to see that take shape as well. Uh, real estate's a great asset. It's a it's a weird time for the single family market, but our commercial portfolio is booming. Um, so yeah, it's kind of doing a little bit of everything and then sleeping a whole lot of sleeping. <laughs> it's important, dude. It's important. It is important. Yeah. Are you are you tracking your sleep? So I got this Whoop band that I'm, I'm tracking, and it does it realize it's just done nothing but aggravate me more than anything. Yeah, yeah. So I was I was probably one of the first. Uh, like gurus to get into like aura ring yeah, back yeah. in the day. I remember being on aura's beta list and waiting six months because they didn't ship to the United States yet. That's just how early it was. And um, man, I was so religious about my data. I've got years and years and years of HRV and heart rate and body temperature. So I was into aura. I was into whoop. And uh, right now I'm just like, I don't really care. I'm not really tracking any of it yeah. because when I wake up in the morning, what do I want my first inputs to be? Do I want it to be like, oh, this beautiful sun, let's go out and take a walk. Or do I want it to be like, oh, dude, you're dying. Your HRV is too low, which makes me sound like a total hippie right now speaking <laughs> it. But um, I have so much data that I just I'm like, I don't really care right now. I'm gonna, I'll yeah. put it back on, you know, later. So. Yeah. Bro, I'm in the same same boat where I've realized I'm my first thing as I'm like, well, how did I sleep? And then I'm letting that freaking dictate my mindset of, well, I didn't get enough sleep. I'm going to be just kind of a no tired today. It's like, what the heck am I doing? <laughs> yeah. Versus actually, you know, uh, using the data to actually affect what I should do about it. I was having it affect me. And so it's like, I don't know. I don't know how much longer I'm going to have this on. Plus it's summer, man. I need to get this tan line taken care of. So <laughs> yeah, dude, it, it definitely, yeah. It makes you have a nasty tan line. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. dude, it's funny. So, um, oh, I, I'm always curious, man. So I have, uh, you know, equity stake in a number of different companies as well. And some of them are just like fun projects. Uh, some yeah. take obviously more time than others, but what are some cool, cool projects or, or fun things that you got going on? Yeah, so there's there's a couple cool things in the crypto space, um, kind of like trading alerts for crypto, teaching okay. people how to trade uh, trade options and 
uh, deal with the volatility of the crypto markets right now. It's just been a bloodbath, which has kind of been fun to watch. Sure. Um, there, the paid media side is always going to be fun because it's just marketing. It's marketing and advertising. You know, like, man, I, I cut my teeth after the real estate world um, on David Ogilvy and John Caples and Carlton and Halberts and, you know, these guys who are just the best advertisers in the world. And so there's, there's, I'm having a ton of fun on the the paid agency, which is exciting. All digital. Um, is that, is that all digital? Yeah. 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 Right yeah nothing direct mail as of yet. Um, I, I might know a guy also, that does some direct mail if you want to test some direct really? mail stuff out. Yeah. I, I, I do would, a, I do I a fair amount. Oh. Do you? Yeah. What do you do? What do you do? Dude. So I mean, we mail probably, oh my gosh. Um, probably between a hundred and 300,000 pieces of mail every, every week, um, just dependent upon our, you know, our clients and which ones are working. But so we, we fill events all throughout the country, live events. Um, and like, that's where I was just saying, where I, I literally, for those that don't know, I've like ran in to hop on the computer here and, and do this interview because I've been out selling walk-in bathtubs for the last <laughs> couple of days, <laughs> yes. uh, which is just one of our companies, but we fill all of those events through direct mail. So, um, you know, everything from, but direct mail, it's, it's evolved so much, man. When I first started, it was like, yeah. you could send a little three by five postcard and people would show up. And now it's entirely different with the list and data and, and, uh, yeah. yeah. So, but yeah, I, I kind of, I, I geek out to that. Cause I, I love it, but by far I love digital marketing, but by far the highest return on results that we've ever gotten still to this day has been direct mail as far as filling live events. Crazy, wow. Huh? Right. You should, uh, you should just start, you add my address in there and start sending me stuff. Yeah, I will, man. I will. You should join yeah. uh, the King's council. So I'll, I'll send you. I'm, the, I'm in. Yeah, send it to me. <laughs> <laughs> Easiest sale of your life. <laughs> Save me a stamp, even. I love it. Come on, man. <laughs> uh, uh, right on. So, paid, um, paid uh, marketing or, or advertising. That's great. Your your commercial real estate is that. Are you doing those as like funds, or is that just you own personally? No. We, yeah, we're syndicating them. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So I have a I have a piece of it. Um, mostly it's run by my dad. So my dad was in, uh, corporate America forever. He was a VP of sales at all state insurance. And so he oversaw like tons of tons of agents. Um, and so when he was kind of ready to move on from that, it's like he, he had a background a little bit in real estate as well. And so he's running that whole fund and crushing wow. it. And, uh, like it's crazy right now because for example, there, the, the, subdivision we're building in nashville um man it's it's our it's not done yet but it's already appraised two million dollars over what our build costs were wow. and so we're just, it's just like the market is you know in, insane yeah at the moment so like okay well we'll just you know we'll take it Heck yeah. um and short-term rentals is also an interesting crossroads because it's like after covid especially we we had short-term rentals in branson and they did okay during covid but once the restrictions lifted, they just exploded. And so your nightly rental stuff is like some of the highest yield uh, asset class I've ever seen in the real estate market. Right on. Love it, man. Yeah. I love that. You just, you, you got so much going on. I, it's, it's amazing. I love. Yeah. I, I, love, I'm, I almost like, have, I can't wait to consolidate. I think uh, that's one of the things we're doing because uh, yeah. over the next couple of months, it's like just consolidating positions. Um, last year, I felt like I was too wide and thin. Sure. And so I really want to go narrower. Um, people send me messages all the time. Like you probably get the same thing. You're like pitching me and you know, oh, you, yeah. I'll give you equity in this. And it's like, I don't actually have time to do anything else at the moment unless I start violating my values. And then that that's a bigger issue. And so like there is power in focus. Uh, and then once you build a bed and you build some, some team, then there's can be an incredible power in diversification. But you got to go in order. Yeah, man, that that's so good, and hundred uh, percent. And we, I get a lot of those messages, and um, I've realized that the, the question or the answer isn't isn't necessarily well. Excuse me, the question isn't 
can we do it? The question needs to now change. Like, should we do it? Like there's, there's so many opportunities and yeah. they all can be successful, but it's, it's like, what are you going to spend your time and energy? And dude, I've, I've had everything from a freaking rubber ducky company, uh, like no joke, rubber ducks. I've had a warehouse of like 300,000 of these things to, oh uh, <laughs> to You're a car amazing. dealership. Serial entrepreneur. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't know if cereal was the word then maybe stupid. Um, but, <laughs> but a lot of I've, I've afforded the ability to make a lot of bad decisions that, um, I like to now, I know help people not make those, those bad decisions. Um, yeah. but yeah, it really comes down to just like, what, what should you focus your time and, and just sticking within your wheelhouse of like, what's, what are you, what are you good at? Like, what do you know that you, you can crush and, and you know, why, 100%. why, why try anything else? So yeah, I love yeah. it, man. How do, do you, um, I, well, how, how will our listeners, uh, find out more about you? I know you're on Instagram. I follow you on there. Um, yeah. What else? You yeah. It, Instagram, Twitter, uh, all my usernames are Taylor A. Welch. You can also go to, um, Taylor A. Welch.com. You can, if you want to try out, if there's anybody who's, uh, you know, wants to grab maybe the free, uh, memo you can go to consultingmemo.com just i'm all over the place Social's easy um, and if you do follow me on social send me a message i love talking to people yeah absolutely taylor a welch uh we'll make sure that we put those in the show notes as well but um the consulting memo did i get that right yeah it's just con- consultingmemo.com no the com. cool i'm gonna yeah. i'm gonna check that out man i love that i love that yeah. it'd be fun getting something in the mail right yeah, dude, you'll love it. Hey, you're well, you're sending it to everybody else. Let me send you direct mail. That's what you need. Dude. Yeah, exactly. Now I'm sold. All right. <laughs> we'll swap. We'll swap letters. Like old times. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh I love it, brother. Well, I appreciate you being on the show, man. Uh, we'll have to have you on again. Maybe you can join one of our uh, King's Council actual coaching uh calls. We host those Monday evenings, man, live with uh hundreds of people throughout the country. So we'd love to have you on there if you're, if you'd be willing to join us all in dude, just tell us when we'll do it right on brother. Have a good day, man. <laughs>